getting data is the most exciting thing in the lab. That feeling where you're like, I'm the only person in the world in this moment who knows this thing. It may just be a little thing, but it's so cool to think about. And then you start thinking about what that might mean for advancing science and healthcare and all of that. That gets me pretty amped up. Well, my eyes adjust, my joints are rusty, sheets are awful cold and dusty, road over folks, it must have been a Running is like brushing your teeth. It's just a normal part of the day. It's like part of self-care. I wouldn't run if it wasn't fun. I just really love that feeling of moving fast through the forest or the ridges or the mountains, whatever it is, it's just, so joyful and a lot of times when I'm out there doing it, I just get that feeling like, this is what I was made to do. This feels so good and pure. I think it's important for anyone to have something that makes them feel that way. And I think for a lot of people it is being out in nature. Right now I'm wrapping up my PhD, writing my dissertation, and finishing up final experiments. I actually try to do this thing called the Pomodoro Method, where I sit down and I force myself to write for 50 minutes, and then I give myself a 10 minute break, walk around. Now that I have a dog, I can walk the dog, and then you go back to it. And I notice that really helps, because if you just try to power through like all day, the last three hours of work is pretty worthless. So I think it really helps to maximize focus and productivity. I wouldn't say I'm a natural scientist, but I think I just have a lot of enthusiasm for it. And so that enthusiasm kind of breeds resilience for failure. I actually failed my first quiz of med school, which was super stressful. But you learn a lot more from those mistakes and those, those failures than you do from success. It's Tuesday, May 26, 2009 at 7.33 p.m. At Stillwater High School here, just walking into the track meet. Rachel's running the uh, two mile tonight. Here she comes! Cross country was really where I started to fall in love with running. And that wasn't until my junior year of high school. Ended up running in college at the University of Minnesota. Had a really good experience there. Kind of felt like I didn't really fit into the world of really regimented running. If I didn't do well, it was this huge disappointment of like, well, you have so much potential, you know, you've got a stress fracture, you 
went to Spain for the summer and gained 15 pounds, which actually happened. <laughs> when I was in college, I had this, this sense that like, you're never gonna get the opportunity to be competitive again. Which isn't true, you can compete when you're 40, 50, 60, like, these lies we tell ourselves are not true. I love that trail runners have other jobs and other ways of contributing to society and don't just run. You can be a student, you can be a nurse, you can be an engineer, you can have a full career and be a competitive athlete and I think that's so awesome. Kenzie River 50K, he had won the race, so he was probably feeling pretty, pretty confident. <laughs> and he ended up sharing some Dr. Bronner soap with me as we're like washing off in the river. Just chatted a little bit, didn't really hang out a ton, but then he messaged me on Facebook and he was like, hey, I really mistakenly left it to chance we'd run into each other again, we should hang out. And then Tyler and I ended up being really good friends and just like developed a really strong friendship. I think we dated for a year and then got engaged and then a year later we got married. Now we have a dog. So far so good. Teddy's from Texas, he's from El Paso. We got him through a Portland rescue organization and he's just been a real life enhancer for both Tyler and I. Before Tyler was my coach, I used to have really bad anxiety. I would throw up before races because I was so nervous. He's really helped me get over that. He understands me, he knows what to say, and has helped me to just find the joy in running and think of it more as a, a form of self-expression than anything. I don't know anyone else that could coach me that would be able to address all of those things. There's no log that I have to write it in or report back to. It's just more of a effort-based, nonchalant kind of thing. I like to keep it nonchalant. I guess what I thought people were doing in the lab was, you know, wearing goggles and lab coats and playing with liquid nitrogen, which I do that sometimes, but there's a lot more variety to it. I use several techniques that involve, you know, measuring different things in the cells. So there's a lot of different ways to approach scientific questions. And the really neat thing about science is that you can pick and choose what you study and how you study it which is really, really fun and creative. I will get my experiments going and then I'll go run on the trails. Even if all my experiments fail in the lab, it's like, well, at least I got that one hour, you know, forest bath in. Like in an ideal world, I would just be able to hop in the elevator and appear right in the forest. It's not quite like that, but that would be a dream. In science, you're coming at a problem from a lot of different directions. You're doing a lot of different methods and techniques to to try to understand something, and in running, there are those same elements. You're proving to yourself that you can do this much vertical climbing in one training session, and you're proving to yourself that you can consume this many calories in this small amount of time. 
And based on that, you hypothesize that you can crush this race. Even though it's something you've never done and you don't know for sure, you can actually have a tangible result where you are satisfied and you say, wow, I can't believe I actually did that. Running and grad school has given me a lot of joy and reason to celebrate, but there's also been a lot of failure, like bad races or big experiments that I've messed up. And I think it's important to step away from that and think about, you know, how to bounce back. And fortunately, Tyler's family shares a cabin out near Mount Hood, and we go there, and it's just a great place to recover and get away from distractions. I think it's really important to surround yourself with people that remind you of why you're doing what you're doing and just build you up as a person and love you no matter what. The cabin is right by an amazing network of trails and trail running is another great way to bounce back from failure and just remind yourself of who you are really and what you love to do. I like to think of running as a form of self-expression so whether it's good or bad you can just go out on the trail and just kind of let it all out. It's fun to think about these big things that you almost can't wrap your mind around. And then when you do it, it's like a very visceral feeling to, to get through something you didn't think you could do. Anything that brings you to that place of relaxation and contentment will make all the other aspects of your life better. So if you're having fun, you're winning. No one can take that away from you. You could get last place, it doesn't matter. If you have a good time, that's great. That's, that's really all you can ask for. You might love too hard, chase embers neath the stars. When thunder comes, you can always lean on me. Don't bite the hand that feeds, I won't damn you for your deeds. You can stay all night if you just don't lick my knee. Chase every glint upon the wall, we love to see you when we call. Guilty eyes shine through precious stars. Hail chaos queen, wounded but never mean Kindness hiding behind every bar Kindness hiding behind every bar 